Hi guys, Francis here. I will demonstrate today to you how to use uh, NetBeans and uh, using NetBeans how to access your stateless session bean. In the stateless session bean, I'll be showing you uh, entity beans. For that to happen, we have to take a new project. Remember, I'm using NetBeans 7.2, which is the latest version. And in the choose project categories tab select the java enterprise edition and enterprise application click next next give it an application name for my purpose i'll be just giving it a test i'm making it in java uh, ee5 specification i'm making sure that my ejb module is there and my back archive is there this will be acting like a client and this is where I'll be writing the this EJB class. I'll be writing the entity class. Click on the finish. So once this is done, you will be able to see both of them, the web archive and the EJB. In the EJB, we will have to create a persistent or an entity class. Also, we have to remember in our services we have database is a tab in case if it is not you cannot see this you can just go to windows and services that's control 5 the shortcut in jdbc let's right click this and connect this will connect to the data database java db which is inbuilt in netbeans and you open this you will see this app uh, and you will see the tables now remember over here there is no employee table and i'll be creating it from the front end also we have the servers uh, we have glass space. I'll just start it in the meanwhile. I'll head to the project tab again. If you don't know the project tab, is just press control 1 in NetBeans. We have got the enterprise Java bean and the war file. What we'll be doing right now is we'll be creating a new entity class. Let's give it an example name as employee. and giving in the package persist I want to create a persistent unit this particular XML file will connect you to the database so basically this is the uh, driver for database and it's asking for data source so data source I'll be taking a sample sample is the app which I showed you the services database and I'll keep the names as default I'll just use the strategy to create because I'll be creating a table right now and I'll say finish once I create this, I will be creating an employee um, entity bean in the persist uh, package. Here we can see that. And over here, I'll be just creating two more uh, values. Generation type auto, I'm just keeping it from auto to identity because it will create an identity type call up in the database. Otherwise, that creates two tables. Um, I'm going to create string name and uh, integer salary I'm going to select this remember at the end uh, like I'm, I'm going to add some accessors and mutators just right click insert code get and setter select getters and setters for both and select encapsulate field which will make my variables private and I also get the getters and the setters over here in the end. Once I am created the persistent file, what I'll be doing is I'll be selecting a new, or select new other enterprise Java beans, session beans for entity class. Click on next, select or add all. This particular window will add all the entity classes present in your. Uh, in your uh, project in the session bean so I'm creating a session bean from entity class that's the option um, let's keep this as remote local because I'll be using this option remote is when you're using a client as a Java application we're using the client as a war file so we'll just keep it to local and just say finish once this is done, we we'll, we should be able to see some of the methods created. So there is a facet class and various methods to create, edit, remove, find, 
it's like select and everything using the query uh, from the front end so here we see that we have the employee packet and there's a connectivity this is the persistent unit persistent unit is already created in the configuration file you can see in this persistent.xml which i'm double clicking right now and yeah, you can see all the information it also includes all the entity class and closing this off also um, so here we can see that there is uh, there is there is something known as an entity manager a very important class to connect to the database and uh, this will help us to actually uh, you know get send uh, like do all the various operations such as insert update delete the all the crude operations uh, crude is like by the way create update delete insert okay so now we are done with uh, creation of this um, session bean we'll be able to see a session bean session bean it implies the employee uh, class it's an entity bean yeah we can see that's entity type annotation now what we do is we create a war file we just I just edit the index file let's say for example we are creating a table employee which is for HR and HR people are interested in actually getting the things done to the people so what they what we'll do is we'll also take on palette yeah. once we are taking the palette we'll take a form in the body tag and action will be just saying say so let so this will be redirecting to a servlet which will be creating later on and uh, we'll be taking a table I do not want um, the thread tag so I'll just remove this and in the first table data I will say uh, name over here I'll just insert a text box and I'll just give it name as name keep all the default options over here I'll be giving a value salary and over here I'll be inserting a text box again once I'm completed and uh, the name will be salary so this becomes my client and now what I'll do is I will be inserting a button on the click of the button it goes to this servlet so let's take a button giving it default name once we create this we we will be creating a servlet name as servlet just like this right click new servlet let's keep it servlet with a small s let's give it a package p1 so next we do not want to give any initial parameters and say finish so once you say finish your servlet is created and we'll just, just deleting some of the comments of javadoc and we'll be creating we'll be importing our bean our employee facet bean in this particular class so you have to for that to happen you have to just right click insert code and use call enterprise bean option it's asking and we take this employee facet and say okay once we do that we get an annotation it's a ejb and this is the uh, method over here um, before the response that get right what i will do is i'll create an object of the entity bean that's the employee class so i'll create an object of employee class instead of object I'll just give it a meaningful name let's say Francis is equal to new employee once I take this that it will be automatically an import on top we have the employee import and then uh, 
we can just set certain values such as object dot set name the name of this individual is Francis also we'll just set the salary of Francis the object fifty thousand dollars okay so once this is done we see an object and now we will have to write this object into the database so for doing that we use this employee factor object which we earlier imported and we say dot create this will create the Francis object and just edit some of the default things over here um, in fact what we can do is instead of Francis we'll just keep it as an object because this is going to change dynamically based on what the user trying to input so let's rename this Francis object and say object as I don't want to statically hard code things over here I will say request dot get parameter and this is the parameter we have passed in the GSP file and the name of the parameter is name also get salary we will be able to get the salary in string so we'll have to do integer dot percent in this we'll be saying request dot set parameter and in this we'll be using the parameter which we earlier specified in the JSP file and the name was salary Oh yeah, we just get the object and we'll just make some changes okay, uh, as the title and in h1 we'll be writing congrats user request dot get parameter name is created successfully so I guess we are done. Uh, I have also used, I have just loaded this uh, Glassfish server. We will be looking at it. Just say right click on it. Let's open the domain. On the main wall, yeah. And what we will do right now is we will just do a clean and build of the entire project. this should go smoothly so here we are and we have to click on the application tab last fish in the services you will see that on our database there is no table employee we'll just refresh to make sure yeah 
and uh, we are successfully built and we can see that it's the demo EGB which we created is already deployed I'm sorry this is a previous application so I'll have to undeploy this so we what we do right now is we right click and deploy once we say deploy the application has nothing then it, once it says deploy we'll be just looking at it successfully done let's see whether it comes up to our screen yes the test has been done so let us select this and go to the URL you can either go indirectly I can just click on this link and click on the test for so it will ask you for a name I'll be just putting Francis and salary is 50,000 just submitting the form and we do get an error over here now I can see the error part is over here because this to go along the context congratulations user Francis is created successfully is the message let's see uh, there is no errors on the glass fish yeah there is no error and now we go to services we just right click on the app and refresh so here we see a new table employee with the columns which we created and we right click and we view data automatically an SQL command select all from employee and we see Francis and 50,000 so guys that's it for the demonstration of this particular exercise of entity beans